This new DJI power station, the Power 1000, has a special feature on it that I think pretty much all power stations need to have built into them. This is an extremely portable power station that can be recharged off of solar with 800 watts using two solar input ports. This also has a really decent battery capacity for emergency preparedness or just for power on the go. But most importantly, the inverter on it is surprisingly powerful for the size of this unit. I was even able to winch up a trailer to take it to the dump using this system right here. And I've taken these units with me on multiple trips now in order to test them out. And I've been able to run my laptop, DC fridges, power tools, including battery chargers for battery powered power tools, drone batteries, all sorts of things. These have been able to run without any problem. Now, before we talk about the Power 500, I wanna go over the Power 1000 really quick. And you should know that DJI did send these units out to me for a review. That doesn't change my opinion in any way, shape, or form. I'm gonna show you exactly how it's worked for me. The pros and the cons of the system, they speak for themselves. The first thing is the compactness. This is about 28 pounds, so it's very easy to move around. I can easily put this in my back seat of my truck. Usually when I take this with me, this goes on the floor of the back seat in my truck, and I usually put it on its side like this. That way I have access to all the outlets sticking up, and then it's out of the way for tools and stuff in my back seat. Besides this being so portable and easy to use, this has a 2000 watt inverter. And what's so impressive about the 2000 watts is that I can run heavy duty things, including pumps for moving fuel, as well as using winches. I recently had a project where I had to take an old beaten up trailer that was on one of my properties and I had to get it onto my flatbed trailer and so we winched it up onto the flatbed in order to get it to the dump and this was able to power that winch without any problems. Normally I'd have to take one of these bigger units with me that has like a 24 or 2500 watt inverter and those easily weigh about 15 pounds more. So having this lightweight system right here with a powerful inverter makes jobs like that really easy. This is a very basic system. There's not a lot of learning curve to it, but there is one thing that will make it very different than the others. I'll show you that in just a second. But you have your basic AC output right here. You just click the button. You don't have to hold it down, but you'll notice that these lights are very slowly pulsing. And what's so different about this unit compared to what I've seen on other units is this pulsing light right here means that after 30 minutes of no power coming out of these outlets, that it's going to turn off the inverter in order to save power. But if I now hold this for about two seconds, this now has a really bright light on it. And that means that the inverter will stay on no matter what until the battery drains. Now, the reason you want to know this is because if you just turned this on and plugged a refrigerator into it, well, oftentimes fridges won't run for an extended period of time because they don't need to get any colder. And if that's the case, then the inverter will have no load and then turn off. Then when the fridge needs to get colder, inverter will be turned off and that's a problem. So I do like that this is built in and it's very easy. You don't have to go into an app and change the settings. You also have two USB-A and two USB-C fast charging ports. Now these really come in handy when I'm using my drone out flying around getting footage for videos or just for fun. It's pretty common that a drone battery will last somewhere around 20 minutes, but can take hours to charge. That's unless you're using these really fast 100 watt charging ports, then you can easily charge your battery in less than 45 minutes. And so I keep three batteries, that way I'm using one while flying, having one charging and then one on standby. And I can rotate all of them charging quickly enough that I could fly all day if I really want to. Now, one of the downsides to this system is that there isn't a 12 volt cigarette lighter port built in. So that part was a little frustrating to me because I do like to use my DC fridges when I travel and I just posted a video about that, but it's really nice when I can plug directly into the power station using a cigarette lighter port in order to power the DC fridge. Otherwise I have to use their little AC inverter, which plugs into here, which is still okay, but it's not as efficient as if I was just running directly off of DC. Now they do have some options for that. These here are called SDC ports. Now these SDC ports, the top one is called SDC and the bottom one is SDC Lite. I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between the two of them because this is where your solar input's gonna go. And you can do anywhere from 32 to 58 volts and up to eight amps on each of these for a rated input of 400 watts. Now I'm not entirely sure how you're gonna get 400 watts into each of these because in my experience, whether I'm using 100 watt, 200 watt, 350, 400, 450 watt, whatever size panel, I'm going to exceed that eight amp rating in order to get the 400 watts. 
So you may realistically only get closer to 600 watts, but DJI didn't send a solar charger for me, and so I'm not able to test that in this video. I actually like that everything's on one side. There is nothing else, no plugs of any other kind on any of the other sides. So if I only have access to one side, then I know I'm good to go. But it does have a slow charge and a fast charge. You're looking at 1200 watts or at 600 watts. And the reason that's important is if you want to make your battery's life cycles last longer, which I don't think is a big deal, then you can go to the 600 watts. If you want to get this charged up really quick, then you go to the 1200 watts. This will charge from zero to full in about 70 minutes. This does have a 1024 watt hour battery in it. So if we're running a DC fridge, it's not uncommon to get anywhere from 15 to 20 hour run times. And that's even still using it on the outlets. Or if you were to be using this with a normal residential fridge, it'd be pretty typical to expect anywhere from six to eight hours to run that. Now, I know for myself doing video editing on my laptop, especially while on the go, that's very power demanding of my laptop but this was able to run on an entire long road trip with me and I never had to plug this into a charger. One of the other cool features that is an available option is this carry case. So I normally keep this system right here in this carry case. That way it's always protected. That's why there's not a ton of scratches on this, even though I've taken this traveling with me. It does a fantastic job of keeping it all protected. And the coolest thing is I can unzip the front here and have access to all of the ports. So I'm very easily able to keep the screen and the ports, everything clean and scratch free. And if I open up the sides here, I can even get ventilation to go through. So you see this access is the vents here, these little wings that flop down. The only thing I probably would have changed in this design is have it zip the other direction so that the flaps are going this way. So that way in case it's raining, it would do a little bit more for water protection. This isn't designed to be used in the rain, but you just never know when a rain cloud is gonna come through. Now one of the major problems that I do have with this system is the user manual. The paperwork that's included is very simple and basically it's a QR code in order to get the digital user manual. Well, I've downloaded it multiple times and it doesn't show me anything. So that's a real problem. I can't easily find the specs and information here on my phone. So I don't know if that's an issue with my phone, but I have not been able to get clear information on my phone on how to use this using the QR code. Now, if you use a DJI drone, you'll recognize the tone that is used for the power on and power off. It's the same beep that you get when you use their drones. So that's kind of cool that they carried that over. And the Power 500 unit is basically just half of the Power 1000. And it's just an even lighter weight, more portable system. I've taken this with me on day jobs in order to keep my batteries charged up and it works phenomenally. The screen is really bright and easy to read from anywhere. If I just push the power button, it turns off the screen. And if I click the power button, it'll keep the screen on. Now this unit still has two 100 watt USB-C and 18 watt USB-A, and it's still gonna use the same charger on the front as well. And you're limited to one SDC port. And this one says it's an SDC light. You get the same outlets here, the two outlets, just like you see on the Power 1000. This, you're not gonna get as much output. It's just gonna be for basic charging. This has a 1000 watt inverter with a 512 watt hour battery. I've used the Opez and the River and other small similar units from other brands. And the 1000 watts to get out of this is impressive. If you need to pull a decent amount of power, this is a really good option. You may not be able to run it for a really long time. And I wouldn't use something this small for backup power like for a fridge but this is really easy portable power. And again, all of the ports are on one side, so I can prop this up just like so, and then have it in the back of my truck, or I can even keep this in a toolbox or a tool bag and have portable power everywhere I go. Now, overall, these aren't units that I would recommend for emergency preparedness for long-term blackouts, but if you do need portable power, this is a really good option. I've personally been using these for a couple of months and I like them. They're very good looking, they're very simple to use, and the bottom line is, they just work. I've had zero issues with these. I love the protective case that you can get with this unit. My biggest gripe being that I don't have a traditional solar input using like an XT60 type connection and that the user manual that comes with the unit, I really do like having a paper manual with me because oftentimes where I'm off grid at my cabin, I don't have internet and I do want to have a hard copy of all of the information of the units. Now I'm sure DJI has some coupons for you if you're interested in one of these units, especially if you have some DJI drones, it's cool to complete the family of backup power and portable power. So I'll have those links down below the video. In the end, what I want is for you to be prepared. And if you want to be better prepared with emergency power, then you should visit poweredportablesolar.com. Thanks guys for watching, be prepared. See y'all in the next video.